<laughs> so I, I moved to Oklahoma City about four years ago, and I had lived in towns such as Houston, Las Vegas, uh, spent a lot of time in LA and San Francisco. And I, uh, every city always had these great delis. And so when I moved to Oklahoma City, one of the first things that I noticed was there really wasn't a, a deli here. Um, and, you know, I was uh, working in the oil industry, and so it wasn't really on my radar yet. But um, after the oil downturn, I found myself looking around, and I realized that this town was exploding. Mm -hmm. um, it became very diverse. There's everything from medical and oil. I mean, it's just all these things. And um, it's growing rapidly. The food scene was growing rapidly, but there was still no deli. Uh, so I, I thought that was a great opportunity, and I, and I really wanted to, uh, yeah, and I, and I also had it in my background. My family uh, had some sandwich shops when I was growing up. Uh, they were named Big John's up in Northern California. Well, actually, yeah, uh, it was at my grandma's house, which was about an hour and a half away, so I actually had to look forward to those things. Uh, you know, it was like during the summer when uh, grandma was babysitting me, it was a, a treat. We got to go there for lunch, uh, and so that was always really awesome. Um, you know, just seeing how uh, the, the sandwiches got put together and, and just um, just the, the way that food kind of brought everybody together, including yeah. the entire family. I have long uh, loved to cook. Um, I'm passionate about food. Um, I've, I've always liked, I, you know, when I lived in California, one of my favorite things to do was on weekends, go to the farmer's market, um, figure out what I was gonna cook for the week, go to the farmer's market, buy all these fresh, beautiful ingredients and cook them up. Um, so my family's deli was more of a sandwich shop than an actual deli. Um, but it was important to me when I thought about this concept of kind of bringing back um, you know, there's this big push, you know, people are kind of going away from fast food and all that, and there's a big push towards they want real food again. Uh, and, and so I just thought that this was a perfect opportunity. Um, and it was really important to me that we cook from scratch everything we do. We, we make our bread in-house, fresh, daily. We have a white, um, a gluten-free wheat, uh, the white bread, the rye bread, and uh, we just added uh, Italian rolls. Um, we brine uh, our pastrami and corned beef for two to three weeks, uh, and then we smoke everything in-house. The pastrami is smoked here, the turkey is smoked here. We, we cook off the roast beef uh, all the time, too. Um, pretty much everything except for the Italian cured meats and yeah. the cheeses are, are made here in the house. Yeah, the pastrami, that's, that's a fun one. Um, it, it's, it's a little bit more smokier than the East Coast. Uh, you know, I figured after all my time in Houston um, and in the middle of the country here that, you know, people really like their barbecue. Yeah. So when I was researching the pastrami, um, I decided we were going to hit it a little bit harder with smoke. Um, we do it as a traditional brine. Um, you can find a lot of brines out there. There's a lot of good brines. Um, we follow traditional methods in the brining process. Uh, we, we have a little bit of a, we have a proprietary pepper and coriander blend that we use for our rub. It's, it's fairly traditional, but there's a few little pieces that are our own. Um, I worked with uh, our chefs uh, a lot trying to get that nailed down. Um, and then we also uh, decided to, to smoke it a little bit heavier. Instead of just a real light smoke and steam like you see from a lot of the East Coast delis, we actually uh, smoke and cook it off in the smoker um, before, we, before we slice it up. Now, how long did you start playing around with that before you opened this place? I had been playing with corned beefs for uh, several years, oh, that, um, you, yeah. and so I had the idea for the brine was already kind of nailed down. I understood uh, how long to we needed to brine them uh, and all that. As far as the rub, it was we we had one that was decent. I had one that was decent, but we probably played with it for about three months yeah. um, before we really nailed it down. And then the smoking time was, I mean, yeah. it was it took. Uh, about the same three months. As we were doing different <laughs> pepper blends, we were kind of honing in on our smoking skills as well. Yeah, the matzo ball soup, it's, it's, it actually it, it ties into a bigger thing. So when I was putting this together, classic deli, um, I wanted to do an American deli. Um, you know, people are like, oh, are you a Jewish deli? Are you a German deli? Are you an Italian deli? Um, I've experienced all of those throughout my life, and I didn't really want to pay homage to one. I wanted to pay homage to all. And so I call this an American deli, where I kind of took the best of all of those things. But one of the main things that I think about when you think about a deli is you think New York. I mean, that's just, your mind goes there. And the famous ones are next to the theaters. And so when I saw that they were rebuilding and redoing the Tower Theater, I, I thought that this is just this natural marriage, mm -hmm. right? A theater, a, t a deli right next door. Mm -hmm. And then part of that was the matzo ball soup, which is about as iconic as pastrami. Yeah. Um, and, and so we decided to do a, a matzo ball soup and it's, um, it's a traditional style. We make our chicken stock from scratch. 
um, and we roll our balls using uh, the uh, the Manischewitz uh, we can <laughs> brand. Close. Um, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> uh, Manowitz, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we we roll those every day, and um, and we make it here, and and I think we're the only ones in town that have it, I and right. I and people they they love it. <laughs> And the people that don't love it haven't tried it yet. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Practically everything in this place um, has some meaning to me and somewhere in my life it's been a part of. Um, you, you know, not only the salads, but the soups, for instance. There's a tomato garlic soup. It's actually a Basque garlic soup with tomato. My very first restaurant job when I was 15 years old was at a Basque restaurant in my hometown. And they had a Basque garlic tomato soup. And I wanted to recreate that. And, and as luck would have it, I'm still friends with the owner. And I contacted him and said, <laughs> hey, I'm opening this place. And he said, well, I'm trying to market it for you know, distribution with Cisco. Um, I can't tell you. However, if you were to <laughs> look this up, you could probably figure out the rest. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, the salads in there, the coleslaw is from one of my, I talked to, it's a, it's a place called the Original Pantry in downtown LA. And I talked to them and they gave me their recipe for their coleslaw. And it's a place, it's open 24 hours a day since the 1920s. And you sit down at night, I go there after Dodger games. Yeah. And you sit down, the first thing they do is they bring you a loaf of sourdough bread and a, a plate of coleslaw. Yeah. And so um, it's just small things like that. Um, the pasta salad, that's one of my chefs. Uh, that's something he grew up with. Mm -hmm. um, just so everything pretty much has a story. That's um, great. I love that. No, that's that's fantastic. I mean, it's like pieces of Eric, you know. Yeah. It's like bringing everything together. That's really you know, cool. and that includes the Big John sandwich that yes. we have. Um, yes. The the sandwich shop that my that my uh, family had owned was called Big John Submarine Sandwiches. Mm -hmm. um, Big John was my grandpa, and then there was a smaller version of the Big John sandwich called the Little John, which was named after my dad. <laughs> um, I what I decided to do was keep the Big John sandwich as one, but the Little John we made a salad out of it. Um, you know, uh, the Langer's 19, it's my favorite deli in, in L.A., uh, it's Langer's, and their number 19 has coleslaw on it, so we recreated and named it after them. That's great. Um, I also noticed you got some, uh, a little bit of beer uh, under the, in the cooler there. Tell us a little bit about the... We do, um, and, and I'm really proud to say that we have a strong selection of local beers, um, you know, Vanessa House and Coop, uh, Angry Scotsman and, uh, and Anthem. Mm -hmm. um, They've all been very kind to us. Uh, they've said good things and promoted us, and I and I really enjoy being able to promote them back out. Oh, Elk Valley too. Yes. Um, and then the other beers. There's a, again bringing it back to me and, and my experiences. There's Sierra Nevada in there. Mm -hmm. A couple of them. Um, I remember riding my bike through Sierra Nevada Brewery when they were building it. <laughs> um, and it's my hometown, so um, I, you know I got to represent them. Um, awesome. And then summer. Uh, just because you know, we try to like we try to give the customers what they want as well, and so we have some in there that are specifically for the customers, and they've asked for them. So, sure. All right. Well, one other thing, I assume if uh, folks want a very large number of sandwiches uh, catered to their office or home, that's something that could happen. Absolutely. We just ask for um, uh, you know a, a day or a week, depending on what you need, um, advance notice. Again, we cure and smoke and brine everything in house. So it's a little hard for us to, you know, put a snap our fingers and have a delivery for 30. But but if you give us a couple days, mm -hmm. uh, two, three days um, advance notice, we would love to bring you sandwiches. Awesome. Where are you and when are you open? We are on uh, Northwest 23rd Street, 427 Northwest 23rd, next to the Tower Theater. There is a large parking lot across the street uh, with a crosswalk that leads directly to our door. Uh, our hours are Monday through Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and then Sundays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Very good, sir.